This video introduces the movement known as modernism. The first step in understanding modernism is the concept of modernity, which we have already discussed in some detail. In Europe, modernity began as early as the Renaissance, which is also known as the early modern period. And many scholars would claim that modernity has yet to end. Our current moment is the era of late modernity. Modernity, at its core, involves an idea of progress that is based on the category of the human as it is defined in the European West by humanists, enlightenment thinkers, and others. From that European perspective, humanity involves an autonomous individuality and agency worth celebrating. In this view, humans are marvelous beings who can achieve great things on their own thanks to their exceptional minds, whose ability to reason sets them apart from the rest of creation. Modernity refers to the historical era that emerged alongside this definition of the human. It marks a time period when, thanks to events like the scientific revolution, humans have finally discarded superstition, have finally taken advantage of their brain power, and can finally perceive the world as it really is. Enlightenment thinkers celebrated their modern age as a time of improvement and progress, when men fully use their intellect to create a more rational and perfect society on earth through new governmental, economic, scientific, and manufacturing technologies. Mary Shelley's father, William Godwin, epitomized this outlook. He celebrated human reason and theorized the perfectibility of humanity. Now that we have reviewed modernity, let's turn to modernism. First of all, let's clarify what modernism is not. It is not the same thing as modernity, the time period. Neither is modernism the same thing as the term modern, which often is used to simply mean contemporary. Rather, modernism is an artistic response to the promise and the failure of modernity. Let's begin with the latter part of this dynamic, the failure of modernity, which refers to events which did not confirm the idea that men were amazing beings who made society better and better. One famous early example is the French Revolution. It involved what some historians have called a reign of terror during which the revolutionary government ruthlessly dealt with the opposition. During this period, at least 300,000 suspects were arrested, 17,000 were officially executed, and as much as 10,000 died in prison or without trial. Of course, Europeans were very guilty of bad behavior. We've seen it in the history of slavery. Equiano reminds us of this in his narrative. Consider how his first encounter with European people takes us to a version of hell. But Westerners rationalized their bad treatment of Africans and other people, such as women or Jews or Muslims or indigenous Americans, by defining them as subhuman. What an event like the Reign of Terror pointed to was how European men were perfectly capable of doing to each other what they had been doing to those they deemed less than human for a very long time, at least since the advent of colonialism. Events like the Reign of Terror posed serious challenges to Western narratives about societal progress and the idea of the human on which such narratives were based. The 19th century had more than its share of horrors enacted in the name of progress and modernity, but it was the early 20th century that brought the failure of modernity to the attention of white Europeans as never before. 
The first major early 20th century event to showcase such failures was World War I, which has been called the first modern war. Technological advances in fields like engineering and chemistry led to new modes of transportation like submarines and airplanes and new weaponry like poisonous gases and the machine gun. Instead of advancing humanity though, these technologies led to tremendous violence and destruction. During World War I, 41 million people died, many of them young men. The artistic movement known as modernism generated paintings, literary texts, and other works of art that responded to such failures, even as they often retained some investment in human greatness. So a good starting point for understanding modernism involves stressing its doubleness, ambivalence, and complexity. While a humanist or an enlightenment thinker typically, optimistically, links human action to progress, the modernist artist is keenly aware of how so-called improvements actually have made life much worse and led to horrifyingly brutal and lethal actions. While the former group stresses historical success and achievement, think, for example, of stadial theory, modernists address historical failure and disaster. An example of such a negative attitude to history appears in this famous line from James Joyce's Ulysses. History is a nightmare from which I am trying to awake. Moreover, modernists, especially white male modernists like Yeats, grapple with the way that events like World War I undermined their status as capable, autonomous, and rational humans. Instead of celebrating humans, as Kant does, for example, as wondrous individuals who do wonderful things thanks to their brain power, modernists reimagine humans in a far less confident and optimistic manner. One that, for example, explores human insecurity, debasement, vulnerability, fear, and impotence. Take, for example, the identification of proof rock with a bottom-feeding crustacean in this line from T.S. Eliot's love song of J. Alfred Prufrock. I should have been a pair of ragged claws scuttling across the floors of silent seas. Crucially, the lessons of modernity, its tremendous upheavals, the blow it strikes to enlightenment and humanist selfhood are not simply themes for modernist works. Rather, modernist poetry and other modernist art forms seek to recreate through their art the upheavals of modernity. They endeavor to capture the experience of modernity through art. Such a goal speaks to the way modernism, even as it attacks modernity and the category of the human, remains interested in a kind of achievement and greatness. But that greatness does not emerge in major social programs, economic enterprises, or scientific feats. Rather, it emerges in the art created by artists whose work they believe is best situated to represent and respond to modernity and its challenges.